Good evening. I'm not uh, ready to get started just yet. I will wait until 8 o'clock uh, for any uh, people arriving on time or just after. But I'm just uh, testing video and audio. So if you can hear me, there is a chat and question bar on the right-hand side of your screen. Make sure that you do uh, nominate it as a chat message or a question message if you are going to contact me. But if I could get you to mention in that chat message area that you can see and hear me correctly. So you are, uh, you are uh, su supposed to be looking at the property investment event as a red slide on the screen uh, and seeing and hearing me correctly. So I will get started in a few minutes. If I can just get you to do that, that'll be great. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Gretchen. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Frank. Thanks, Tony. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Vince. Thanks, Vinny. Uh, great to see such a great turnout so far. Uh, only a couple of minutes away. Thank you, Phil. Um, you're obviously working quite well. I think we've uh, res resolved the resolution issue that we were seeing last week, uh, in last, oh, the week, the week before that in, uh, in the webcast event. We are using this great new software, which gives a lot of excellent tools on the side uh, for us to use, but uh, in the first, we had a bit of a teething run a couple of weeks ago, so the resolution seems to be nice and clear tonight. Let me know if that does deteriorate. You can actually control, uh, the. it is a YouTube, Google Hangouts uh, backend, so you can actually control the resolution, I think, if you do hover over the slide, but I'm actually controlling it manually this, from this side as well. So you are able to also share uh, the webcast tonight via the Facebook and Tweet buttons in the bottom part of the screen. Uh, and once again, you do have the chat uh, and question uh, area over to the right-hand side of the, the visual area. So I'll just pop the, the, the audio on mute again, and I'll be back in a few moments to get started. Thank you. Okay, without further ado, my name is Jacob Field and I thank you for coming along tonight uh, and sharing an hour or so with me uh, and some other investors that are on the line tonight to discuss Ipswich uh, as an area in focus, which is just inland from Brisbane, Queensland, for those of you uh, not, not overly familiar with the area. Uh, tonight is a really special introduction to a new format of uh, webcast that I'm uh, undertaking. This is the first event of type and I'm going to be bringing in some very special guests who are experts in the area uh, and also uh, wider property investment experts to give their opinions on, on Ipswich. Let's have a little bit of a round table. Let's collate some opinion. Uh, let's spot some opportunities and potential threats in investing in Ipswich. Let's try and make investing there accessible. Let's look at the reasons why we might potentially invest there in the first place and what strategy it will work for uh, it might not be for everybody. Uh, thank you. I, I will be taking questions at the end, uh, and Peter's just jumped in there uh, talking about a particular property. So I will be going through a, a case study uh, using uh, suburbs and, uh, in, in Ipswich, uh, and if possible, I can jump in there, Peter, to look at the property there at Leichhardt in Ipswich. Um, so there will be a question and answer session at the end. Uh, yeah, feel free at any time, uh, jot down any questions that you do have. Make sure you do actually select it as a question and it will come through to me and I can pull those all up at the end and, and get through one at a time. Uh, and you are able to chat at any time. Uh, if there's any audio visual problems, just jump through in the chat section on the right-hand side of the screen 
uh, and I'll uh, address those as we see them. But a great turnout tonight. Some shout outs from some familiar names. Uh, thank you once again for taking the time out on a Thursday night. Uh, and a shout out to Scott once again. We're not going to be going through and covering off the, the uh, in the new format, we're not going to be covering off on the assumed knowledge. So Ripe House is all about property and location. Uh, we have a really unique database of property uh, data and also location data. And we have done a lot of research in the past and continue to do research around how proximity to certain amenities, public housing, etc., affects uh, appraised value for property. Uh, I will be popping through after the event an email which gives you a reference back to a previous recording that has a lot of that information in it. So we are assuming that knowledge. We are really focusing on the core uh, Ipswich information tonight uh, and bring in some really special guests which I'm really excited to talk to you about. So as I say, apologies if there's any uh, problems with audio video tonight. This is the first time I've tried to, to link all this up. Uh, some of the uh, guests have had to be recorded. Uh, to be played uh, back tonight. Uh, I can assure that's all been done in the last 24 hours and is very real, very up-to-date and current information that's been provided to us tonight. So at the end of it, as I did mention, uh, the, the, we will be talking about some exclusive access to Ripe House to be able to be used with Ipswich and, and as I say, the investment case study, trying to put it all together and make it actually work for us uh, in, in application. So jumping right in, uh, a little bit about me, so I'm, I'm an investor who's been investing in property since I was 19, so over a decade. Uh, I would classify myself as a DIY property investor, so I really do give preference to developing my own education and knowledge with investing, uh, investing in my own network, uh, knowledge to be able to thrive, move forward and invest for success. So I formed Ripe House uh, as, a, as a labour of love really in 2011. Uh, I, I do have an IT and, and uh, background and uh, it was a, a natural move uh, combining the two. Uh, property and, and IT are two of my loves and I love uh, working with Ripe House and helping other investors. Uh, so it's all about making uh, and helping and providing information, research and tools that investors can use to make their own decisions, make clear, concise and accurate decisions. Uh, and you know, tonight's all about providing real information to be able to break down and invest in areas without any outside help. So all the information you potentially need to understand these markets, the drivers, the growth drivers, breaking down into the individual areas and tools to be able to use to, to invest in these areas. And really doing it yourself, uh, you know, if you're investing in education and improving that process and, and the resources that you have available and learning those resources and leveraging them, uh, you can rinse and repeat that over and over. Uh, you, you know, you might not need to be paid for that education uh, when you can break it down, make it simple and applicable. So that's what it's all about tonight. Uh, as I mentioned, it is a new webcast format. So if you've got any suggestions, uh, feedback, uh, any problems, etc., please jump in. Just while I'm taking you through this slide, I'm just going to ask where is everybody based tonight? So I'm going to start that poll now and let that run for the next few seconds. I'm just like to get a little bit of an idea about where people are listening in from. It's over on the right hand side of the screen there. It is a checkbox, very simple checkbox to select. Uh, it's going to be great to see where the eyes are looking into Brisbane and potentially where investors are, uh, are based in Australia who are interested in investing in Brisbane. But uh, we have been promising and rolling out new functionality within Ripe House for a number of weeks. I was talking to Tony, who looks to be online tonight, today by email, who's frantically been asking when the flood zone functionality is being rolled out. And I can say with almost certainty within the next seven days that's going to be available and there's actually a sneak peek of that functionality tonight, just in very limited capacity uh, in application to Ipswich. It will be rolled out. Uh, for Brisbane and Ipswich in one go, and then rolled out across rural Brisbane, uh, sorry, rural Queensland, where applicable in the next week or two after that. But it's going to basically visually show you where flood maps are occurring with the risk of occurring in those regions. Uh, you know, that's something you can go out there and you can see in other places across the internet. But the real power uh, within the Ripe House tool is going to be able to filter properties in and out of those areas automatically. Uh, that might sort of sound, yes, that's great, I can do that manually, but the real uh, key within doing that is it's going to show you, we can do the research, we can show you what you'd expect to pay, more or less, for sitting in or out of uh, flood risk or at risk areas in different suburbs. So you're putting a dollar value on that risk. And that's, you know, it, it might suit your strategy having that little extra risk, lower purchase price, higher yields, uh, but information is key and 
uh, gives you power. Uh, so that's what it's all going to come back to. It's not just going to be the flood maps, it's going to be the ability to filter properties and see the differential between in and out of those zones. We have been making a couple of tweaks within the Ripe House tool set in the last week or so just to improve usability and performance. Uh, we have been putting a lot of focus and uh, development onto our custom overlays features within the tool. Uh, with that focus, it's making things a lot easier and, and, and more powerful for people to apply and, and find particular streets within suburbs to invest in. We have rolled back our strategy level overlays and data. It's just muddying the waters a lot with, with Ripe House users. It's conflicting messages in a lot of cases. It was a very conservative capital growth recommendation at a street level using our integrated strategy recommendations. We've rolled that back and given you absolute control to customise your own street level requirements to find those sweet spots for you in, in, the, in the suburb. Uh, if you're having any problems with that, reach out. There'll be contact information at the end. I can help you configure those manually and, and get it right for you, and it's going to be a lot more power uh, going forward. So, um, yeah. Just looking into the future and a preview, um, we have got an amazing report coming up. I won't give any details about this. I have got very strict uh, uh, gag order placed on me. But within the next couple of weeks, look out for a brand new report that's going to be coming out. It's going to really revolutionise the way the quality of research out there uh, for investors across the nation to analyse suburbs, street and properties. Uh, it's going to have uh, great information to really apply quickly. Uh, and to move forward in co with confidence in buying investment properties in unfamiliar but very high upside locations across Australia. So watch out for that. Uh, moving along, tonight's special guests, uh, as mentioned, obviously, we are focusing on Ipswich. We've come to Ipswich because in the last few weeks and months, we've been focusing on the Logan area within Brisbane. A lot of investors at the price point of White House users uh, Sydney uh, and Melbourne based investors with a lot of equity potentially or generally, sorry, uh, now looking to have a higher yielding, lower purchase price investment. So a lot of eyeballs coming through from White House users. We can see 36% of you are actually currently based in Sydney, 24% in Brisbane, 5% uh, in Sydney, 9% in Western Australia, 5% in Tasmania. Hello. <laughs> I'm actually uh, recording this tonight from uh, from Tasmania, so a big shout out there, and 5% from ACT, 16% from regional. So a lot of eyeballs from a lot of different areas across Australia looking into Brisbane. Uh, real growth area up, uh, with excellent upside. Uh, it, it's recently been featured in our Q3 state by state, state round table as a number one prospect for future and short term growth. Uh, yeah, a lot of you are looking towards there, and particularly the Logan areas, which is rated very highly by Terry Ryder. We did cover that in a joint webcast I held, uh, held with Terry Ryder about four weeks ago. We covered the Logan City area in depth because of its low purchase price, its high yield, and it's uh, very nicely applicable to Sydney and Melbourne investors looking at, at divesting a little bit or, or using some of that capital growth in recent times for yield. Uh, we well, have seen in the last few weeks a lot of the key uh, and, and better quality stock throughout Logan drying up. Um, we're left with stuff that might have been compromised in a lot of cases and I, I have been working with a number of investors in the last week who have on the ground going around open homes and looking and are, you are still finding some gems, uh, some, some hidden gems there. Uh, generally, I am just saying let's look out uh, at a option two, Ips, which is a similar price point, similar yields and it is rated very highly from Terry. Uh, with his hot spotting and suburb level uh, predictions. So I will be hearing from some very special guests tonight. We've got uh, the Mayor of Ipswich City Council, Paul Pasali. Uh, I did speak with him and grab his uh, views around population, employment and cultural growth within the Ipswich region. Are people living there and working out or living in other areas and, and focusing inwards to Ipswich? What's population growth? What are some of the council level uh, entrepreneurial uh, initiatives that are going to really foster foster that growth and capital growth for, for investors going forward. I did jump in with Terry and grab his views about Ipswich. What is he seeing with the market? There may have been a false start there in 2011 with the floods, but has that recovered and, and what's the short-term growth prospects? Uh, Russell Peter is the principal of Pure Rentals, which uh, services the Ipswich area. Uh, from, from our conversation, he seems to be right on the pulse there with what tenants are demanding, uh, how to find and secure uh, good quality tenants that are going to treat the property well and enable you to actually 
uh, perform and achieve yields without vacancy, which is very important. And Scott Lawton uh, from Landworks Property is someone who has been uh, in higher volume looking at development uh, blocks within Logan and now also obviously into the Ipswich area. So he finds sources, develops and then builds uh, you know, anything from, from a small townhouse development up to a, a very large uh, subdivision uh, type uh, development. So we're going to be uh, trying to pick Scott's brain about what are some, some pitfalls to look out for with potential types of land and uh, property within the Ipswich area uh, and, and, and some advice around uh, potential for subdivision and development for us tonight. So I'm really pleased to introduce these guests and I, I do hope this new format does work uh, and we can get some key information from these great on the ground uh, experts who are going to help us look at the Ipswich area. Um, moving just to Ford, so this is where I'm just going to jump in now uh, and I'm going to play the recording I have with Terry uh, in the last uh, 24 hours. Um, just with coordination of a live webcast, etc., uh, scoping in and out, uh, it's very difficult to ensure reliability and everyone is on the line dropping in and out for, 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 all, for all of you tonight. Um, so I'm just going to be hitting the play button. Beautiful. Okay, jumping into our first special guest tonight, I'm really happy and delighted to have Terry Ryder from hotspotting.com today, you on the line. Uh, Terry's just going to elaborate on the growth prospects of Ipswich, and it is included in his top five Brisbane hotspots report, uh, which is available from hotspotting.com today, you. So, Terry, uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on the capital growth prospects for Ipswich? Yeah, we, we're a fan of this, which we've followed the Egypt market for a long time. Uh, like all markets, it does go through down phases, and it certainly has been through one of those down phases in the last two to three years. But we see it gearing up now for its next growth phase. Uh, traditionally, it's been a very good performer on capital growth. Um, if we took a poll of the entire Brisbane metropolitan area, three years ago and looking at the 10-year the growth rates, uh, the top 20 list for metropolitan Brisbane was absolutely dominated by suburbs and into the city. Um, their growth rates have declined because the market has dropped back over the last two, th two to three years, but um, it's now gearing up for its, its next growth phase. We're starting to see a pickup in sales activity and um, Brisbane continues to attract attention from both home buyers and investors because it has a, a very attractive mix of uh, characteristics of primarily affordability. It's the most affordable part of the Brisbane metropolitan area, but also very strong underlying economic factors, very good growth drivers in terms of uh, businesses moving out there, generating jobs, a very proactive city council, which has worked really hard over a number of years to try and uh, Attract business attention, been very successful. Uh, a lot of industrial, like industrial businesses, move out there because uh, the land and rents are, are cheap relative to inner Brisbane, and also the, the road and rail links are very, very strong. So, lots of things in Ipswich's favour, and it's, um, we're very confident that it's going to start showing growth again over the next, uh, say, one to three years. Beautiful. And so you just mentioned there with sales volume, is that the leading indicator that you're looking at, at the market picking up for, for Ipswich? Well, we, we tend to look at it in two different ways. One, we look, take a long-term view where we look at the sort of underlying fundamental spending on infrastructure, which is very high in Ipswich City, uh, population growth, uh, affordability, good transport links, all those things that we use to um, pinpoint future hotspots for our hotspotting reports. And then we take another look at it from another angle, which is looking at sales volumes, because that gives us a short-term view on the basis that a rise in sales activity is going to inevitably lead to a rise in prices in the near term, usually with a bit of a time lag of, say, six to nine months. So we're starting to see around the Brisbane metropolitan area there's been an uplift in activity over the last two years. It started more in the inner city suburbs of the Brisbane area and now starting to filter out to those outlying areas like Logan City in the south and Ipswich City in the southwest. So that uplift in activity in Ipswich uh, and the number of sales happening is rising and we see that happening in, um, leading to near-term price growth as well as long-term growth because of the underlying fundamentals of the economy out there. Beautiful. 
that was what I mean. My next question around, you know, when can we expect the growth, if and when, to occur? So short term is that six to twelve months, and longer term is three to five years. Or I think we're going to start seeing uh, price growth again in Ipswich in the next six to twelve months. Um, but we think it's, it's going to be the beginning of a growth phase, which will probably extend uh, from now for say another three years. So good time to be considering buying there now. Um, you know, the, I guess the perfect investment is one that's affordable, has good rental yields. Um, you get some fairly immediate price growth, but taking that long-term growth, um, long-term view, the growth prospects are good as well. So, Edward uh, City sort of fulfills all those criteria, we think. Wonderful. And as I mentioned, it is included uh, 10 pages of due diligence and research in the top five Brisbane report at hotspotting.com.au. And I think that report's available for $77, and it is... Uh, there are other four other regions, obviously, in the top five reports, so it's around 50 pages in entirety. Is that correct, Terry? All correct, uh, Jacob. Very true. Wonderful. So definitely check that report out for some more information around Ipswich. But, sorry, Ipswich, but thank you very much for your time, Terry. You're welcome, Jacob. Okay, some great insight there with Terry from hotspring.com.au. I have uh, just reached out in the middle of that interview and asked uh, our question, is the sound okay for everyone? And you have given me a bit of feedback around the echo and, and the, the, um, the, the, the little bit of muffle there. There will be a recording and a transcript uh, to be able to be tracked back and, and dissected for you at a later date, which will have potentially clearer audio, etc. But great insight there from Terry about his reasoning around the Ipswich area, uh, what... Uh, Looking at the affordability, which is driving a lot of the investor and owner occupier interest in the area, at the price point, it is opening itself up to a larger market and, a, and an increased demand pool. Uh, he's then referring back to economic factors, business, proactive, proactive city council, which is, leads in very nicely to our next guest, uh, which is Paul Basali, uh, who's the Lord Mayor of Ipswich City. Uh, I uh, was delighted to speak to him uh, about what he is seeing as the uh, for, from a government's point of view, uh, around cultural employment and infrastructure development in the Twitch local government area. So I'll jump in now and uh, and we can hear from Paul around what his thoughts are uh, in the area. Okay, a very special guest tonight. I've got Paul Pasali, uh, who's the Mayor of the Ipswich Council. Uh, he's on the line tonight to talk about the uh, what, what uh, government initiatives are happening at the local area that is going to uh, increase confidence and, and prime Ipswich for the capital growth uh, potential for the area. So thank you very much for coming on the line tonight, Paul. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Uh, I'd just love, love to ask you a couple of questions around some of the arts, cultural and community activities that you've got earmarked for the area or you've recently undertaken, the effect that's having on for the livability of the area. Yeah, well, the most important thing is the arts, the arts and culture, economic development, and making sure you protect people's investments. One of the things we've got in regards to our art gallery, it's the most regional visited art gallery in the country. We're just about to open on the 5th of September is our, our aquatic pool, which will be bigger than South Bank at Brisbane. And what we're doing in, in, in regards to tourism and the, the railway workshops and all those areas to give it that sense of pride and community. So that's, we're, we're, we're up there, and as you know, we've just been judged the top seven intelligent communities in the world and no other city in Australia has ever made that. Beautiful. I guess, uh, so Terry, so we've just spoken with Terry Ryder from hotspine.com today. You and yeah. he has uh, Ipswich earmarked for excellent and above average capital growth in the region. Uh, and, and one of the, on the back of infrastructure spend and also uh, employment growth. Um, yeah. Can you just give us a little bit of an idea around, so, you know, you're, you're creating Ipswich as a hub of, of a vibrant hub. Is employment coming to the area or are people based there and, and then working in other surrounding areas? No, no, no. I've, I've been involved in politics for 20 years and before that through the regional development corporations. The biggest factor that I want is creating jobs because it's, it's the most important thing you can give any community. And um, one of the things Beautiful. that we've got, our unemployment now is dropping like you would not believe um, uh, the most important thing is create industries. We've got uh, Goodman's here. We've got 43% of all the industrial land. We've got some of the biggest developers in the country. Because my job is to make sure I work with them to generate profit to um, make sure they, um, you know, create jobs. Some of the factors that our, our um, demographics, are, the state average is 36, we're 32, so we're, we're a useful city and we're dropping in um, in age. So that's great. It's 
staying home. And 80% of our kids that leave school stay here. So we've actually got that percentage right up there. So I'm not going to stop until I get 100% of the kids getting jobs in Ipswich. Wonderful. And so we've got a lot of investors on the line who are looking in the area to purchase uh, our properties to obviously tenant out and, and rent. What are some of the government initiatives in the next uh, little while around employment and population that are, are going to really benefit that tenant demand? Oh, we're the largest, um, you know, um, defence base in the country, or probably in the southern industry, we're the largest aerospace industry in the southern industry. We're creating new industries, and one of the things I'm going down the path of just called the fire station, where we as a council is going to be creating um, innovative hubs with technology based on Chicago 1871. So you're going to see new thinking here, and when you see new thinking, you've got a lot of people coming here. Um, the university, USQ, is growing strong and strong, and the Marta Hospital is coming here. So you've got a, a community that's not only subdividing land, but creating a community and generating the jobs to go with it, and that leads to rental demands, and you're getting a good return on investment. Beautiful. It's, uh, I really appreciate the insight, Paul. It's, it's great to, uh, it, it sounds like you're doing some amazing things there at the council uh, level. Yeah, thanks very much. You just got to look at the last 10 years. The last 10 years, the city's gone up by a uh, billion dollars a year in value. So you can't go wrong, and I'm going to make sure that trend keeps going. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, Paul. And uh, the city of Ipswich website is ipswich.queensland.gov.au for more information about the initiative. Thank you very much. Through. Thank you. Thank you very much. So that was uh, Paul Pasali is the mayor of the city of Ipswich. Uh, I just think I'm, I'm drawing a lot of comparisons of what uh, Terry has mentioned and spoke about, and then ha hearing that from the straight from the horse's mouth with Paul talking about his focus on tourism, jobs, uh, and the, the development of a culture, I suppose, within the the Ipswich community as an area of focal point to hold those jobs into the long term. Uh, in speaking with Terry and how he puts his reports together in the past. He does spend time with uh, local governments uh, and try to, to get a feel for are they entrepreneurial. It does come back to that number, uh, to, the, to, that, to that fact, are they entrepreneurial? And I just get the impression when I talk to Paul, uh, the variety and scope and breadth of the initiatives in the area, uh, it, it, just, it just pushes me back to, to think and to, to interpret things as an entrepreneurial outlook from a local government area. And I think that's a great way of... of uh, sort of rolling out the bumps or riding out the bumps of an area which may, uh, you know, if there is a negative or, or environmental uh, um, negative aspect within the area, an entrepreneurial council can ride out those down periods and, and really drive the community and uh, economy forward. So it's just really nice to, to hear and talk to Paul and get that a little bit of insight into what they are doing uh, at that level. And I'm just relating the, the two back uh, with what Terry has said and, and then Paul reiterating and, and uh, feeling a bit of comfort from the area. I mean, as I say, Brisbane uh, is an area with a lot of, uh, a lot of growth uh, upside. Uh, it's, you know, when talking with Terry and, and um, some of the, you know, the top 20 suburbs across Australia, top 10 regions across Australia, you've got Sunshine Coast right through into Southern Inner and then also Ipswich within Brisbane. Uh, you've got a lot of focus in that South East Queensland area. Uh, a lot of, obviously, flat growth in, in the last little while where well, Sydney and, and uh, other areas have gone ahead. Um, things, are primed with uh, things are primed potentially for short-term to medium-term growth within the area. So it's great to have this insight on the ground, uh, reiterated with Terry's short and longer-term views. I just want to now relate it back to uh, property investors. You know, so we uh, are buying a property to have uh, yield, and to have the, you know, obviously the mortgage serviced by a tenant. Uh, it's coming back to the fact what types of properties are tenants demanding to live in in the Ipswich area? What types of properties are going to lead to tenants which are going to allow us to uh, achieve, you know, excellent or average or above average uh, or some rent and yield going forward? Uh, what types of properties may compromise the ability to do that? Uh, and um, how can we avoid them? So I'm going to be talking now with uh, Russell Peter, who's a principal of Pure Rentals Property Management, which is based uh, in the Brisbane and Ipswich area. They do service the Ipswich area. Uh, he's got a lot of on-the-ground uh, insight, and uh, I, I, I like his approach with how uh, with Russell's approach and how speaking with him about how he ensures that there's a really good fit between the property manager, the tenant and the landlord, uh, making sure that dynamic is healthy, making sure the property is positioned to attract the right tenant uh, with the right demand 
for that property uh, and ensuring that vacancy rates and the ability to drive rents forward with the suburb overall is not compromised. So I'm just going to be now uh, switching over to Russell uh, and talking to him about what we can look for to maximise our investment upside within Ipswich. Okay, our next special guest tonight is Russell Peter, who is the Principal of Pure Rentals Property Management, which is based and services the Ipswich area. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy to introduce Russell and get him on the line to just give us a little bit of insight into what tenants are currently demanding in the area, what type of property, uh, and particularly streets, which is which is right, comes back to the right house product, is going to encourage quality tenants, which are, uh, are going to give us the ability to actually uh, sustain and generate some capital growth. So thanks for joining us tonight, Russell. No problem, Jacob. Great to be here. Uh, yeah, so just the first question in, uh, what, are you sort of seeing any trends with uh, tenants gravitating towards certain property types or areas? Yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, there's, there's obviously two types of tenants in the Ipswich area. There's the lower end and the, and the higher end. Um, you know, the higher end is definitely the more appealing properties. And from the tenant's point of view, so there's a lot of new buildings that are happening in the area on the outer skirts of Ipswich, which is uh, getting getting good demand for tenants and the right tenants in the property. So there are definitely um, some good investments out there, good yields to be able to, to get the right tenant um, to, to secure a long-term tenant in the, the newer properties. Sure. It's probably the older properties, um, the inner city older properties with a lot of maintenance issues right. that we're really struggling with at the moment. Okay, any sort of uh, suburbs in particular on the outskirts or? Yeah, there's no real Pacific areas that I've got off the top of my head. I can probably send you through a list if you want it. Sure. Um, but you know, you can you can pick them left, right, and centre at the moment where there's the new complexes where the you know they're building you know, fifty, hundred houses within a, a certain allotment. Okay. Those, those sort of ones are the ones that the tenants are wanting. The biggest issue with buying them at the moment is um, your vacancy rates to start with. Most developers will, will complete you know, 20, 30 of them within a month period. Sure. So then you've got 20, 30 of them coming up for rental at the same time. And, um, so you've just got to be a bit creative with your marketing to make sure that you're doing the right things to secure your tenant. Um, don't do it as a 12-month lease. So we, we, we sign longer leases or shorter leases just to bring it out of that um, that yearly flows of 30 properties come up for rent in the same month, 30 sure. properties get tenanted in that month, they're all going to come up for rent again in the same period next year. So we, we try to get out of that uh, that cycle from day one, so that way when it does become vacant the second time around, you can increase your rent because you're not competing against the guy next door. Beautiful. Uh, which just, just allows you to, to make sure you've got a smaller vacancy rate and a higher yield. Yep, yep, that's awesome insight. And so, um, Obviously, it's off the plan or, or new build type stuff. Is it? Is this sort of equally applicable into similar streets with older stock as well, which is in a, in a good quality condition? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yep. So obviously, the, the appealing side of the older stock is you're getting a lot closer to the, the city, the, the centre of Ipswich, sure. which is a lot, a, lot, a lot more appealing for a lot of people. Um, you just got to be very careful with some of the older stock. You know, the, make sure you get a, a very good building report done to, to find out what any issues are from day one. Um, you know, we've had a lot of properties that have been purchased that are, that are older, that need a bit of work, that you know, the day set up you put a tenant in there, the oven doesn't work, the dishwasher doesn't work, the aircon doesn't work, but then you know, you're four or five thousand dollars out of pocket from day one. And then, you know, on, on top of that, you, then your tenants are upset, which causes more further issues. You're just starting the, the process off on a bad foot. So if you are buying some of those older properties, just make sure that everything's right from day one. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. So in summary, we've got sort of new stock, which is in, uh, we're going to attract a high standard tenant. And we've also got uh, older stock, which is in a, a prime, you know, renovated condition to attract the, the quality tenants, uh, which is a reasonable compromise. Yeah, correct. And then the, the good thing about that old stock, if you've got the capital to be able to put some money into it from day one, is you've then got a property that's in a better location than the newer stock because it's on the outskirts of town. Ah, beautiful. Yep. In, 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 a, in a city, you know, closer to the centre of Ipswich, uh, which then will give you the better capital growth than on the outside. With, you know, and obviously, obviously, with new apartments on the outside, they, they're building so so uh, are like each other at the moment that it's very hard to pick one from the other. So sure. there's no, unique, no uniqueness to it as well, which obviously helps your capital, capital gains and also tenanting property throughout that period. Beautiful. This is uh, awesome insight. Thanks, Russell. And so just to confirm again, it's pure rentals from you. So uh, reach out to Ryan uh, in your office there for, for rental appraisals and potentially uh, obviously with uh, managing the property, which is the core service you guys provide. I, I really appreciate the insight for, for everyone on the line tonight. Yeah, 
Yeah, no problem at all, Jacob. Any questions, please feel free to contact us at any time. We've got a wealth of knowledge in that area. I'm happy to do free rental appraisals for anyone that's looking to purchase in that area. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Yep. Thanks, Jacob. I think just touching in there at the end with uh, Russell. So thanks for, for coming on, Russell. And I can see you on the line here. Uh, so we, we, I might be able to, to sink in with questions at the end uh, if there are any direct uh, in regards to property management in, in the Ipswich area, looking at individual tenant uh, requirements uh, and catch it uh, or, or pitfalls or things potentially to avoid. I just think the key takeaway from that, in alignment with what we've heard from Terry and from Paul, is uh, you know, you've got the the uh, higher volume, the the larger uh, allotment development stock in the outskirts, which is going ahead, and and that's supporting the economic uh, or the population growth and and uh, the supply uh, requirements due to that. Uh, however, uh, looking at the older stock with renovation potential, moving it from unrenovated through to renovated uh, in key inner uh, Ipswich locations uh, is going to prime the property to benefit from great tenant demand, higher quality tenants, and then being able to hold the property for capital growth. So that's the key takeaway I'm seeing in relating it back to uh, you know, an investment strategy. Uh, that also obviously, um, and if you're buying low, uh, renovating through to your manufacturing, that equity uh, potentially you can refinance and, and pull that equity out uh, in the shorter term. Uh, your yields on uh, investment or money down is artificially uh, increased based on the on the uh, high quality of product and the cost price that you have paid to get the property through to that. Uh, when, I, when, I, when I say cost price, obviously uh, that's the renovation cost plus the purchase cost and not the uh, purchase of a new property potentially. So look, and then, you know, Russell there did touch on newer stock in the outskirts, which is supporting a key demographic and key area of uh, population growth within, within Ipswich. And I'd love to talk now with Scott uh, from Landworks Property, who does do a lot of land purchase, subdivide, sub, um, subdivision and, and development within the area. And just before I jump on there with Scott, I can see here, uh, Gretchen, big shout out to you, uh, who looks like the sole person down here with me in Hobart. So I'm sitting here on Elizabeth Street, Gretchen, uh, big shout out to you. And yes, it has been very cold down here this week. We have uh, snow settling at my house here on uh, Monday. Uh, not to probably about six degrees outside at the moment, I reckon. So I've got the heater on here in the office. Um, but big shout out to you. And um, I have started another poll over here. Uh, just, you know, looking at this format, taking this forward uh, as far as grabbing some expert local on the ground opinion in key markets across Australia that Ripe House users are one also looking at. Uh, and then it's also on the lips of, of uh, oh, you know, Experts and, and obviously Terry and Hotspotting, we do respect and follow the work from Terry over at hotspotting.com.au. So I have got a, po a poll over here on the right, and these are another couple of key markets that we potentially could look at next week that tick those boxes. Uh, one of them is Geelong, uh, earmark for employment and population growth. So we've got Newtown as a key suburb sort of close to the CBD in Geelong. You've got Liverpool in Sydney, uh, which uh, with obviously is, is an exception around the Sydney market, which is heading towards its market peak with a bit of a slowdown, or obviously outstanding capital growth recently. Liverpool seems to have a, a longer run outlook for further growth. We've got Sunshine Coast in Caloundra, we've got Cranbourne in Melbourne, and we've got Salisbury in South Australia. So jump into that poll, let us know what you'd like us to focus on next week. We'll grab another round table and some expert opinion on, on the most popular. Just a little bit of a hint, Caloundra in Sunshine Coast is uh, is ahead at the moment. Then we've got Liverpool in Sydney with 27% of people wanting to look and, and and drill down there. Then we've got Cranbourne in Melbourne, which is over in the eastern uh, suburbs of, of Melbourne, its own transport hub uh, there. And we've got Salisbury in South Australia, which is an outstanding high-yielding area. Uh, it'd be nice to, to talk with people on the ground there potentially because they're, depending on who you talk to, there are risk factors around the the employment in the area associated with the whole uh, close down. So uh, that's our options for next week. At the moment, Caloundra is leading <laughs> the race, uh, and there will be time to come back and grab uh, other alternatives uh, in the weeks after if we if we miss out. Uh, but yeah, just rounding out the expert commentary from tonight, I'm just going to bring onto the line and have Scott from Landworks Property share his thoughts about land supply, types of property that will fit the market, and things to avoid in the purchase of land uh, in the Ipswich area. So. And our next special guest tonight
tonight is Scott Lawton from Landworks Property. Now, Scott's actually based out of Rockhampton, but he does a lot of work and development uh, subdivision uh, and building out of Ipswich and Logan. So I was speaking with Scott a couple of weeks ago and really opened my eyes to some of the pitfalls and things to look out for when sourcing, buying, and then obviously splitting and developing land in the Ipswich area. So thanks for joining us tonight, Scott. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks. Uh, thanks for inviting me along. I hear you've been doing some great stuff in the area. Are there any, uh, you know, the, the list is on the line and predominantly it is a, a buy, hold and renovate sort of strategy that a lot of the right house audience and investors do undertake. But are there any sort of major pitfalls for buying land for splitting and development in the Ipswich area that you can see? Look, of course, this is all going to be my opinion and everyone's going to have a different opinion. <laughs> um, my, my opinion in the Ipswich area is it's a longer term buy and hold strategy. Um, I, I probably, it's not an area that I personally would look at for short term flicks. Um, look, there's always the exception to the rule with a, a good price acquisition that you can renovate and, and move on. But um, generally, I'm looking for in a reno to add some value, to add some instant equity and hold it. And, um, and the other properties I'm acquiring would be longer term holds. And the reason that I say that is is simply, uh, if we go, uh, look, Terry Ryder will have the best stats on Ipswich, but what we do know is the council's aggressively uh, in the business of expanding the area, and the, and the current mayor, which I believe you've either had on or having on soon, <laughs> is, says that Ipswich is open for business, and that's certainly the case. Um, and there's a lot of land uh, coming online out there, so I think, um, sorry, jumping back to the point was that, that the current population is set to double roughly in the next 15 years in Ipswich, and they're saying there's something like 100,000 or so dwellings stored out there. Yes. Um, and so there's, there is a lot of development coming online. So um, I, I think what you, have to, what you have to watch out there is that you're not overpaying and that it's a longer term buy and hold because there's going to be a lot of stock coming online. Sure. Um, I think it's a very sound area to be buying in, but it's probably not going, if you're looking for, you know, casino returns, Ipswich isn't the place to be doing that, but it'd be very solid performer, I believe, in the long term. Yeah. We have, um, you did mention when we were chatting a couple of weeks ago that you don't touch any land or, or larger holdings with environmental concerns or, or risks around flooding. Uh, and I was actually talking with an investor earlier on the week who uh, had a uh, mining subsidence problem on the block which turned them off. Is that something you see quite regularly in Ipswich? Um, we, yeah, I think it, yes, sorry for the waffle, uh, yes. And particularly when we're looking to acquire, because when you're looking for splitters, you tend to be working out, if I say more in the fringe, uh, you don't want to be in greenfield areas, but towards the fringe, you're starting to touch on developing properties that might be currently zoned as uh, park residential. Um, and they often have existing overlays of biodiversity, uh, being either remnant vegetation, koala, or um, those things are probably deal breakers for us. Sure. Uh, bushfire overlays aren't really a big deal. Sometimes you've just got to scratch behind the surface with the council to see if it is. Mining subsidence stuff, I personally haven't come across it. Um, but it, it's going to be there, and some of that's really just your due diligence with the council. So sure. uh, where I'd be looking for that sort of stuff was if I had a, a property more in the uh, developed, currently developed areas that I thought might have been suitable to split in half or three. You just want to be doing your due diligence there to um, make sure of that. But um, your, your, your um, overlays of biodiversity are more going to be in the developing areas rather than the, the previously developed. Gotcha. Yep, yep. A nice little bit of insight there. You've got, I've had the details there on the screen around how you can get in contact with Scott at Landworks Property. Uh, you did mention you are happy to, to, to field inquiries and, and general inquiries about the area um, and your company is one that uh, does acquire property and, and potentially work uh, in JV partnership and uh, working with current investors in the area with block splits, etc. So definitely 
reach out to Scott if that is uh, something you might be interested in. But I thank you for your time tonight, Scott. No worries, Jacob. Thanks. Thanks a lot, mate. No worries. Thanks, mate. So I think the key takeaway, um, the fringe for development, and that's sort of going in line with what Russell was talking about, where uh, you know obviously a lot of new stock, which is targeting population growth and, and a particular type of tenant on the outskirts of Ipswich, and it is the focal point of developers and uh, uh, and subdivisions uh, and the larger allotment builds uh, within the Ipswich area. Um, a couple of key takeaways, and so this is overlaid with. So, you know, obviously what Scott had to say then, previous conversations with Scott and also other investors that have been looking in the area. A few things to look out for, biodiversity, uh, red flags on particular uh, land allotments, uh, bushfire risk, flood risk, uh, and uh, there was a mining subs um, subsidence problem in Bovel uh, that an investor was uh, looking at this week. So, and a, and a shout out to, to, uh, to you, Peter. Um, I can see you online tonight. Um, I did try and reach out with, um, so we've got Scott's details, he's an expert on the area, for further information on that property that we were talking to, but it comes down with, uh, with what Scott mentioned there, to talk to council. Uh, I do get the feeling, uh, and, and obviously it's been reiterated with, with uh, Paul opening himself up and being so uh, uh, generous with his time tonight and, and, um, and information, that you can, they, they are understanding, they are, they, they don't put a, a restriction and red tape around uh, investor interests in the local government area. So um, from, from my experience uh, and feedback from other investors in asking those questions, they have been up, very upfront and very helpful in uh, ticking all the boxes or crossing them uh, where um, appropriate. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'd just like to open up and um, you know, there will be the opportunity at the end to ask questions and offer feedback. But just in, in regards to putting together the flow on uh, and, and the special guests that I've had on tonight, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how it's been put together, uh, other types of information that you'd like to have covered in future weeks uh, and, and different areas. Uh, what's been particularly insightful, beneficial, uh, valuable, what partic uh, potentially less so? Jumping into questions, pop it through an email. Uh, this is a, uh, something that I'd love to improve, uh, refine, and continue to provide uh, really interesting insight and valuable insight to investors in key locations. Uh, what we've spoken about and, and, the, and the advice and uh, commentary that we've received tonight has been providing good faith, I suppose. So I'm just uh, putting that out there, and I do want to stress that um, you know I'm not receiving any uh, financial or uh, affiliate arrangements uh, in, in exchange for uh, everyone's opinion tonight. Um, it has been provided in good faith and I have reached out to who I see uh, 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 operators in the Ipswich market who are doing very good things uh, and in a wholesome way for individual investors without any affiliation or, or association with Wright House. Um, yeah, just, to, just to summarise, I suppose, buy and hold strategy to capitalise on the growth for forecast that Terry has in the short and the longer term, uh, and that is then further, uh, I suppose, a bit of a security blanket in having that insight with Paul Pasali as the mayor, just giving us uh, insight into what his uh, outlook is and the variety and breadth of initiatives that he's undertaking to maintain that entrepreneurial outlook, which I think is really important. Uh, look for property located in key inner city locations uh, in good condition or obviously in unrenovated condition, make sure you're not overpaying for that unrenovated condition with the potential to grow, uh, renovate and improve the property through to good condition uh, based on what Russell has mentioned around. Uh, it's very important to secure that high standard of tenant due to the risk uh, that's presented with you know, lower socioeconomic areas. You don't want to have long uh, vacancy rates or, or, or damaged property. Uh, so target that good tenant in the first place with secure, reliable uh, and consistent uh, Rents uh, and for subdivision development strategies, look for population growth where that population growth is being serviced. And as Scott mentioned, the outskirts fringe for development. Uh, talk with local council around uh, ticking each of the boxes around uh, the local um, red flags. Just moving along, I'd like to uh, jump in and start using the Right House tool set as a case study around the Ipswich area. There have been a number of you talking and having a conversation within the chat bar, so definitely encouraging that. Feel free to co have a conversation, uh, gather feedback, and, and really uh, thrive within uh, getting opinions from each other. This is what it's all about tonight. 
Um, there are a number of you asking uh, directly with Russell, uh, who is in the chat, bar around specific suburbs to target for tenancy demand. Generally, I have a rule stepping back uh, within Ripe House, uh, you know, investment grade suburbs versus areas that owner occupiers are choosing to and preferring to live in. So, owner occupiers areas or clusters or enclaves of owner occupiers are great potentially for a flipping strategy. Uh, where you're buying an unrenovated property, you're doing cosmetic or structural renovation, you're selling it to an owner-occupier. Owner-occupier is the key there with that strategy because they fall in love with the, the renovation that you have done on the property. Uh, they get emotionally involved in it. They over or potentially overpay a new profit from that flip in the short term. So generally with uh, shorter term flipping or renovating for profit strategies, owner-occupier on pay is preferred. Uh, for buy and hold, renovate, where anything uh, any time yield or uh, rent has got anything to do with it, uh, what we do with the Ripe House and the tools to help you to do this is find the investment grade on clays within suburbs. So any suburbs overall that have you know an average or above average level of tenants to start with, but then drilling down to individual streets that have between 30 and 70% tenants as an investor sweet spot, making sure those streets also have above average rent and above average yields, which when combined, those three things together forms a very powerful mix to demonstrate a street that has excellent upside for rental growth, for tenancy demand, and stability in vacancy rates. So we'll jump in now and have a look at a street level analysis. And I have picked out one suburb in particular. Uh, Russell and, and, and another couple of you might, uh, we, can, we can jump in and have a secondary analysis later. And, and I'm, I'm always online for phone and one-on-one and, uh, -on -one support, I suppose, with a tool. Um, and we will be trying to look for individual streets within this suburb to, uh, to, to really work for us with what we're trying to do. Uh, so just bear with me. If in a few moments you don't actually see uh, the Ripe House website in front of you, then something's gone wrong, definitely shout out for me. Uh, just to pull back, uh, I'm just sharing another window at the moment. So excuse me. Uh, okay, so you should be now seeing coming through the Ripe House homepage. So we've got a big blue blob uh, across the top of the screen, meet Ripe House. Uh, let me know uh, if you can't see that um, and the screen hasn't been shared successfully, if that is the case. Um, so that should be coming through now. I'm just going to double check that I am logged in OK uh, and we're ready to go in this analysis with Ipswich. So Ripe House, uh, as a lot of you are aware, is a suburb search street analysis and property appraisal tool uh, aimed for the DIY property investor. So it's really a tool set to give you the research knowledge uh, to be able to compete in markets where there's a lot of buyer agent interest. Uh, you, you can look at the, the real numbers, make clear, concise decisions, uh, and, and really thrive in markets you might not be overly familiar with. So if you're a local in an area, uh, you, you know, you're, you're very familiar with the price dynamics, the rental dynamics, uh, the key amenities in a suburb, potentially areas to avoid, uh, areas to seek out. Ripe House really helps you to do that for any suburb across Australia. Uh, what I've just done now, I've logged in very quickly and I am, I am jumping through things very quickly just to get through to the key suburb map analysis page within Ripe House. This is where a lot of the magic happens at a suburb level. Uh, firstly, we load up the suburb which is outlined there in white, which is Ipswich CBD. Uh, one sort of, of to note within uh, regional um, locations is when you load the suburb up, you know, you're typing Ipswich, it's not going to gather all of the sale, the properties for sale across the whole region. Regional, uh, some regional areas have individual suburbs, uh, like Ipswich obviously, some regional areas like Dubbo don't. Uh, if you load, went to Dubbo and loaded up in Ripe House, you'd have hundreds and hundreds of properties on the market for sale. Ipswich is one where you break it down into individual suburbs. Uh, I am going to jump in my analysis tonight over to North Ipswich. So I'll give you a little bit of my reasoning around North Ipswich. Um, and, and, and the background uh, research that has gone into selecting it. Uh, it is close to the Ipswich CBD and there will be uh, a bit of a check and balance I will put on that to make sure we're not extending too far up into the northern area. So it is ticking that box with Russell and Scott uh, focusing in on that uh, close proximity to the inner city areas. Uh, it has a minimum requirement of tenants in the suburb. So a lot of these suburbs, uh, some of the other suburbs that I jumped into um, uh, had too many own occupiers in the suburb to create that nice, strong rental demand. And even this suburb as North Ipswich potentially has slightly less uh, tenants than required, but it still has 30.5% tenants overall. So any of these toggles down the left actually apply 
so, uh, street level overlays to the map and each of these areas comprises of 200 dwellings uh, and when you click those on you can see visually on the map uh, the the owner occupier in this case the owner occupier enclaves or the tenant enclave so the darker the green this area over here to the west or southwest is very high concentrations of owner occupiers but I can see also a lot of industrial areas through there so it might be a bit of an outlier but this area here in the south uh, east of North Ipswich is very strongly yellow which signifies it's a very high concentration of tenants uh, and tenant demand. So we've got 58% tenants in this particular street pocket. And some of these areas right up here towards the Warrigo Highway only have 18% tenants, 19% uh, tenants. So uh, when using Wipe House, when looking for investment grade streets in any suburb across Australia, the real sweet spot is between 30 and 70% tenants to ensure you've still got some owner occupiers who are going to improve the property. Uh, uh, improved street appeal for the, the street overall and potentially you can piggyback on that as well but you've got that nice strong base of tenants who are going to be driving uh, rental growth which might be one of the reasons why you've come to the suburb in the first place uh, and then lower vacancy rates and, and supporting your yields so just I'm really scratching the surface on what's possible within this ripe house page uh, in this particular example the dark yellow areas the nice tenant clusters we can also see exactly where public housing is so this area here has is dark red. We've only got 2% public housing in North Ipswich overall, but this street area here in the southeast actually has 13.1% tenants, uh, sorry, public housing, which is uh, signified by its darker red colour, which means it's right on the, uh, the upper scale of public housing in the suburb. Having said that, uh, we have a general rule based on our research at Ripe House that in lower socioeconomic suburbs, uh, at a 312k median, this suburb is... Uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, lower socioeconomic across Australia. We have a 15% maximum tolerance for public housing. Uh, after you sort of start getting towards 20 and above percent public housing, you'll start seeing very notable, noticeable effect on street appeal, etc. Uh, boarded up windows, burnouts, no front fences, you'll have really patchy tenancies, substandard tenancies, uh, not a very high quality of tenancy. Uh, and you're probably going to compromise, and in a lot of cases we see compromise your ability to index uh, capital growth and uh, rental growth in line with the suburb. You might be left with a dead patch in terms of that growth. Having said that, and, and I've leveraged uh, high public housing enclaves in Dubbo in recent years, uh, seeking them out, knowing that the, the council is potentially going to be uh, diluting the public housing mix and moving across back to owner-occupier buyback schemes, etc. You can actually leverage that knowledge uh, and actually have more upside with public housing and, and the removal of public housing in certain areas. If you are aware of that, uh, Ripe House shows you exactly which streets have public housing as a snapshot in time in any suburb across Australia. So there's lots of other metrics. You can see exactly where the higher yielding areas. So from this, you're actually seeing that higher yields up here in the northern part of the suburb, which may be where the cheaper price properties are. Um, and this, this actual overlay here is actually showing you where those cheaper price streets are. You can see exactly where the high yielding, uh, sorry, the higher renting streets are. Uh, lots of other toggles that we can switch on uh, to, to do this analysis. Um, what we're trying to do here, we've got 49 properties on the market within North Zip Switch. We don't care about all of them. We only want to focus on the investment grade properties and filter out everything that might not be relevant. So in doing that, uh, we've actually got a sweet spot custom overlay functionality here. Now this vertically, each horizontal uh, tolerance uh, slider here, we can adjust what we're willing to accept for the, the key metric in the suburb. It will go away, it will find if we're only willing to accept 10% public housing, it will show us how it's going to limit the streets that are going to be available. Uh, if we bring it down to say 2% public housing example, it's going to bring the areas selected down to nine. That will fall through vertically to the bottom and it will leave us with the key nine areas that will be selected. Um, I'll basically zip through. I'm happy to wear all public housing in the suburb, but there's nothing above 13% of the street level. Uh, I have a 30% rule for tenants, so I'll set that as my minimum level of tenants acceptable. You can see now I've already only got four, uh, set seven areas selected. 94% um, of properties in the suburb are demanded as houses at the moment. So I don't want to be investing in streets that have too many units or too much unit demand. I want to invest in streets that have the the core asset and most common asset class as houses. In this case, I want to avoid streets that have more than one third of the opposite property type. In this case, there isn't, uh, not very many units at all, and we can we don't need to worry about that in this case. Uh, rent per week, I like to have that rule, uh, the, the 
strong tenancy demand, above 30% tenants, higher than average or higher than median rent per week, and also when combined with higher than average yield, is trying to point us towards streets that are a real sweet spot for tenancy demand. Uh, one of the, at a real high level, one of the reasons why a suburb might have good capital growth fundamentals, sales volume spiking, which Terry did touch on, also combined with rent per week increases. When those two things are happening together, it's an indication that demand is saying to cause an increase in rent, uh, which then uh, usually, and, and, and is a leading indicator of future capital growth. So let's look for individual streets within these suburbs that have the three, the big three, uh, median or above yields, median or above rents, and a nice 30% minimum tenants. If we find those, we've set our tolerances there, we've got three areas that will be selected. They are now displayed on the map for us to, to further investigate. Um, we know what's gone into these areas. Based on what Russell and Scott have mentioned around focusing on the inner city areas, there is one area that's bordering the inner city area. The other two are pushing up towards the highway, which may be a little bit too far out. Um, our job now is to make sure we're focusing on the in-demand property type, filtering only properties that are currently for sale into these three selected areas, uh, focusing on three and four bedroom houses, which was mentioned as the in-demand property type by the, the drop down when the suburb loaded. Uh, if you missed that, and only focusing and displaying houses onto the map. So this is going to bring our 49 properties on the market down to a manageable number for us to perform our due diligence on. We've got now 11 that have been selected in these three areas. Uh, and as mentioned, I'm going to take all the properties out of the mix that are, that are in the northern part of this suburb. So I'm going to remove by area, which is another tool we've got for filtering. I'm going to drag this box up. Anything within this box will be taken off the map. And this is going to now leave us with how many properties? We've got uh, five properties that are left for sale in this sweet spot location for tenant demand uh, and the potential for capital growth that are three or four bedroom houses, which are the most in-demand property type. Um, we've obviously got some here at a lower price point. Uh, so we're comparing apples with apples here. You know, these are all three or four bedroom houses within a very tight knit part of the suburb and with the same tenant dynamic. Uh, we've got a price range now, lower quartile price of this sample from 217 through to 304. So that's loosely going to show us the potential for buying unrenovated in the early 200s, renovating, uh, you know, reasonable cosmetic renovation will generally then bring you up to an upper quartile price in application across the whole of the country. So that might be slightly different here. We can see train and school amenities. So I'll see how those, and also a shopping centre, very close in, in, in nice proximity to to this North Ipswich area, which is a real sweet spot for this uh, by the looks. Uh, and we'll see in a moment how that proximity is going to affect appraised values. Um, so a number of properties on the market. You can actually see the full listing history for all these properties. You can see that this property here at 55 Lowry has been discounted by 5%. Um, just going with what's been spoken about tonight from Russell, let's focus on the higher price points and potentially pick out a property here that's in good condition already. Um, this is one here that's on the market for, I think, 300 obviously in well renovated and presented well for sale. Uh, in doing this, and this is a whole other webcast in itself, I'm now assessing street con uh, property condition remotely, solely using images on the internet, uh, just to try and do a, a higher level due diligence, assessing the condition of the property to put it into one of three buckets. Is the property in unrenovated or poor condition, in average condition or in good condition? That's gonna go away and our engine will go away and find other properties that are in a similar condition, uh, we have an automated sentiment analysis uh, algorithm within Ripe House that will automatically assess the, the condition of a property. Uh, it's, it's reasonably accurate, it's not perfect obviously, and you can override it, but it will go away and find comparables that are more likely to be in a similar condition. So you can then compare apples with apples. Uh, in doing this process, looking at street appeal for the property, it's presented very well for sale. In this case, it's a Queenslander, uh, nice colour scheme, very tidy. Polished floorboards, uh, unique sort of uh, period style features, uh, neutral colour scheme, um, you know, tidy and uh, backyard, nothing really jumping out there, but, you know, obviously grand proportions, reasonably modern but slightly dated kitchen with, you know, blue <laughs> wall covering, so that's, um, you know, detracting slightly from the property, it is dating it with that renovation by five, ten years, but it's uh, based on the rest of the property, it's outstanding. The kitchen, the bathroom, sorry, does look very nice, uh, neat, potentially slightly dated there with that wall mirror, um, so I'm sort of getting five or ten year date from that bathroom. But overall, this property is presented very well for sale and uh, just on my very limited understanding of the suburb overall, it's in good condition. The engine has based uh, sentiment analysis and 
found this property to be also in good condition. You can override that if you disagree. Uh, in this case, the engine is 80% certain of this. It will go away and give you the full listing history, the suburb level KPI data. So uh, we've seen 4% price growth in this suburb just in the last three months. We're seeing all the came key metrics within the suburb uh, the last quarter versus last year number, so we're getting a rolling trend line. We're seeing street level information, and now the engine's gonna go away and find relevant comparables for the property. Um, the real power here is it's gonna give you comparables that it's more likely to be in a similar condition, uh, and you can then remove comparables that you disagree with. So we have to own this process, uh, making sure a comparable is actually comparable. You can view the comparable here and yes, say yes it is or not, uh, making sure it's uh, the big three, as in uh, timeliness, uh, you know, very close to, to, to a recent sale in similar condition in similar location. If it is, it's a reliable uh, comparable. If it's not, we can take it out. Uh, if you own this process and the agent is sticking a comparable in there to artificially increase the uh, asking price for a property, you can dispute it and you can call them out on it and you can have your list of comparables to vet uh, and uh, potentially negotiate. Um, so you can remove your own this process. Uh, it will take an average of those top six comparables through to the appraisal stage. It will tell you how far the property is away from the key amenities and public housing. It will give you a final appraisal value for the property. In this case, it's come back at 285, asking price 299. Still potentially some reason, uh, room to move there. Um, however, um, you do have to own the process. Uh, if you've one or two comparables in there that's a little bit low, it will really throw out things. So it's it's very advisable to own that process and become an expert in the suburb, which is not hard and, and the tools they're set up to, to allow you to do that. So you can print a report for that property and take it uh, and further your due diligence. You can compare North Ipswich to its closest 10 neighbours. So you're comparing for and looking for price discrepancies or depressions, finding other suburbs that may have the tenancy demand or, or purchase price uh, and yield requirements you're looking for. You can see all current for sale uh, for rent properties on the map uh, and sold properties. We've got a search engine within, within Ripe House that goes out like Google and amalgamates listings, saving you the time in that research. So uh, we can save this property, we can save our filters, we can save our custom areas, so we can jump back into this suburb as a local area expert every day uh, and, and rinse repeat, finding and, and, and capitalising on new properties coming into the market, all being discounted. Uh, and becoming uh, our due diligence companion every day. So, yeah, a lot to take in and a lot to go through there. And I have chosen one suburb to, to go through in a little bit more detail tonight just to, to, to put our conversations and our expert opinions in context. Uh, plenty more to go through, and I will probably jump in. I'll have to jump in uh, into Leichhardt personally and privately tomorrow. Um, and you know, just looking at time now, it's, it's five past nine. Uh, and I do promise an hour generally with these sessions, so I'm more than happy to, to be pulled aside tomorrow and go through uh, individual areas. Um, just going to switch back, and we will be. Um, do let me know. Um, sorry, I'm just going back to the slides. Uh, if if you can't see things correctly when I do jump back to the slides now, um, which is do, does have the red the red. Uh, header at the top. Um, skipping along, I, I hope you found that uh, insightful in, in use of the tools, how you can dissect things in these remote markets at a street level and become uh, acting with a little bit more clarity and confidence, basically coming down to only seven properties, or I think it was in that case, five properties of the key properties in that suburb, then you only need to perform your due diligence on those properties. Uh, it's really saving a lot of time in doing that. Um, I suppose to summarise the process and potentially buying below market uh, or at market in these remote locations, become that local area expert, find the sweet spots and assess value in those sweet spots only. Uh, assess the property's condition and make sure that assessment is relative to the suburb and then once you're happy with that condition, find comparables that are timely in a similar uh, condition and a, a location. Uh, look and see and if there are any location-based adjustments and then you've got fair market value. Then you can try and leverage local area information, public housing, listing history, condition assessments and comparables to potentially uh, position the conversation with the agent for buying below. That's a framework and obviously in fast moving markets or markets where sales volumes are spiking, it might be difficult to do that. It's difficult to assess fair market value, it's difficult to negotiate under asking price, etc., or fair market value. But this is a general guide that's gonna put you in the, the best step to do that uh, as often as possible. Um, 
Yeah, I can see that the chat line's been going crazy there while I've been speaking, everybody, and it's really great to see um, the, the ongoing conversation. Thanks, Russell, for jumping in and answering people individually. Um, just a little bit of feedback around the Ripe House community. So we are a tool set, we are a research provider, and we are an information provider. Uh, we are a subscription service within our community. Uh, Guy down here on the left is uh, has recently purchased in the Logan area. Uh, excellent investor, uh, really, really large portfolio who's been investing for around 20 years. You can check out a full video t uh, feedback from, from Guy who purchased in Woodridge in recent times. Uh, and then Dave Ward there on the right who's uh, research director at yes.com.au. So as a buyer's agent, they do provide a very uh, high level service in uh, providing advice and, and guidance as a buyer's agent. If that's uh, the direction you're sort of going to go in, uh, Dave has said that the site is amazing and so credit to the team. Uh, I'm 38 and, and been investing and developing in property since I was 19. This is the best tool I've ever seen throughout my career. Um, that, I, you know, I was really warmed um, to see uh, that feedback from Dave um, as a testament to the software. And I suppose tonight is, is, a, is a flow on from the software and how I'm really trying to position information that's going to help people to make decisions uh, uh, with, you know, with confidence and as a personal decision, something that's come from within, uh, they've owned the process, they understand the process, they can rinse, repeat the process, they can see the due diligence pro, uh, 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 schedule for the day and how to rinse, repeat that for results. Uh, Ripe House is a subscription service, so generally we've worked on an annual subscription model. Um, we have been getting a lot of feedback and requests lately for monthly access to the software. So just tonight, uh, and as a, as a quick open and as a quick window to access monthly subscription, uh, which is not something that's usually opened up, uh, I'd love to extend an opportunity uh, or invitation to you as a thank you for joining us uh, to jump in with Ripe House for $97 per month. Uh, no ongoing commitment, no ongoing subscription, etc. outside of the annual subscription model, which is usually how everyone gets involved with Ripe House. So just for coming along tonight, I'd like to uh, thank you by offering that monthly subscription. Uh, you are able to actually lock that in. There is a drop down uh, just coming onto the right hand side of your screen, uh, which enables you to directly click on the uh, subscribe to Ripe House button there at the bottom. Make sure you do scroll right down to the bottom of that offer on the right hand side of your screen now to be able to lock in that monthly offer. Uh, I will be sending through an email shortly which gives you that link uh, which will be available for tonight. Uh, the invitation is extended to, to lock that in tonight. You can also jump through to www.ripehouse.com.au forward slash meet Ripehouse. That will give, give you that button to uh, jump in and access the $99 per month uh, subscription. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm opening the line now. Uh, I am aware of time and I really do thank you for attending and staying with us and, and I really hope you've found tonight beneficial. Uh, please jump in and send me through uh, jacob.fueled at ripehouse.com.au with any feedback, any uh, improvements you can see with the format, any things you've found really beneficial and great. Have you found it great? Uh, what are some of the negative uh, points that we can improve? I'd love to hear uh, uh, how you've found it and how we can uh, keep progressing it, uh, and you know if, if the if the content has been beneficial, if it's something that is is going to help you potentially invest in Ipswich. Um, with Ipswich, it is a, a great uh, area, and it has been selected uh, based on uh, um, the opinions and experts uh, and and what they've mentioned tonight uh, in the market. We haven't stumbled upon it. It is on quite a few people's lips. Uh, there are a few uh, or, or a number of other areas across Australia which we could have talked about as well tonight. Um, as mentioned, I have got that poll here, uh, and next week I am going to be speaking. 36% of you want to talk about Caloundra, which is in the Sunshine Coast area, another growth uh, channel all the way through the, the northern Brisbane area, all the way through up to Noosa. Um, I will be putting together some expert commentary, etc., for the Caloundra area. Next week, uh, close behind with 31% was Liverpool area within Sydney. Um, it would be nice to, to touch on the Sydney area. We haven't focused on that. It has been left off the, the Ripe House radar as far as our webcast and research uh, coverage in the last couple of months just because it has had that amazing growth. Potentially, we don't know when that peak is coming. Liverpool potentially is an outlier and something that is having its own economy and own growth drivers that are above and beyond that market peak within Sydney as a wider market. So that might be for the week after. We can jump in there. Um, but I will open the floor now and start going through questions one by one. 
and I am aware of time, so I, I, I uh, if, if you know, we, we, we will try and get it through as many as we can. Um, thanks to all my special guests and expert opinions. Uh, Terry, obviously, for his guidance on capital growth. Paul, as the mayor of Ipswich, with his amazing insight into the government level policy. Russell Peter from Pure Rental uh, Property Management uh, for his insight into tenancy demand, and Scott Lawton from Landworks Property for his insight into subdivision joint ventures and development. So thank you once again for your time and for uh, the special guests. Uh, first question, uh, can we get Russell to send? So jump in any time with these questions, by the way, everybody. Uh, they, they will appear to me as a question over on the right, a separate part of the screen. So make sure it is selected as a question. Um, otherwise, I'll sort of try and filter through the, the chat elements. Um, uh, um, and, and try and weed out the questions. Scott has just asked at the top, can you stop the subscription after a few months and continue the, the subscription 12 months later? Uh, absolutely. I, um, you know, I've had a lot of requests for the monthly subscriptions just because it suits a lot of usage patterns. Uh, obviously, it's a little higher price point. Um, and with an annual subscription, I do actually offer my time one-on-one, -on -one, uh, personally jumping on Skype going into win. So you can actually lock in an annual subscription still through the website, which does open up my time with that one-on-one -on -one coaching and support. Uh, and if you do jump on at a monthly rate, uh, I am happy if you're after a couple of months, you wanted to move over to an annual subscription, subsidize what you've already contributed monthly to deduct from that annual rate. Um, yeah, uh, question from Mark. Could we get Russell to send out those preferred suburb areas for renters? Um, I'll be putting, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to put everyone in touch. So Mark, reach out to me with email. Uh, I'll collate that, forward it on to Russell, and, and you can contact each other directly. Coming back to the content tonight, North Ipswich, there are, are a number of other areas um, you, that we, I could have just as easily selected. Uh, Boval is one with, with reasonable rental uh, demand. A um, little bit of a caveat there, there are high, very high areas of public housing, so 40% public housing in some streets. Uh, predominantly houses in that suburb, but uh, the areas of strong tenancy demand outside of the public housing does focus on two bedroom units. So a little bit of a contradiction there. Uh, difficult to find that tenancy sweet spot uh, for the in-demand property type. Um, so I couldn't really work with Boval too well and that's why I didn't select it for tonight. Um, plenty more questions. I might just gather these all up into an email uh, to be popped out. Um, it's great to see the conversation with Russell. Uh, thanks for sticking around um, with Rachel and Gretchen. Um, but I do hope you've once again found the content tonight beneficial, uh, insightful, uh, and good luck investing um, in the Brisbane area and overall across Australia, wherever, uh, wherever you, you're going to venture next. So thank you.